hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honour. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Messiah remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus said to them, The light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you have the light, so that darkness may not overtake you. If you walk in the darkness, you do not know where you're going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may, so that you may become children of light. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
The traditional site of the Garden of Gethsemane is full of huge olive trees. Their trunks are gnarled and twisted and as wide as I've ever seen anywhere. And the remarkable thing about them is this. The root foundations of those olive trees go back 2,000 years. That thought I found riveting. Amidst these same trees, grown from the very stock, Jesus had prayed. And his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. For in this garden, his lifelong struggle to hold firm to his vacation came into sharpest focus. Just as the first Adam was tempted in the garden and so tragically found wanting, so now the second Adam, the definitive embodiment of the human race, had to endure his trial. And for Jesus, I feel sure, the nightmare was always the same. Was he deluding himself? That question, the thought that he could be wrong all the time, went back to the wilderness experience at the outset. Con that constant refrain, if you are the Son of God. That question, that existential doubt, which he couldn't share with anyone else, but which was there all the time, for it was part and parcel of his being fully human. That had to be faced, and faced down now. He just prepared his disciples, we saw yesterday in the upper room, for what lay ahead, with food for the journey and the promise of his inner presence. He now went to the garden to prepare himself for the final battle taking with him Peter and James and John, hoping against hope that they might prove some support. He went aside by himself to pray, and falling to the ground. This was no formal time of prayer, no. He fell to the ground. This was pretty desperate stuff. Abba. With all that that word meant, not only for in personal intimacy, but also in terms of his vocation as the son, Abba. If you are willing to take this cup from me, I don't know if I can go through with it. And such was his anguish that his sweat fell to the ground like drops of blood. I don't know whether I can bear the weight of this on my own. And an angel appeared to him and strengthened him. Of course, he was not alone, as we are never left completely alone in our darkest times though by definition it feels like that. In the spiritual realm, he had the whole multitude of the heavenly host rooting for him. But hum humanly speaking, he was the one, the only one chosen to carry it all. And he felt almost crushed by it. Father, please take this cup from me. And then came one of the most important little words in the whole gospel story. With much the same significance as Mary's little 
let it be unto me, which had set the whole divine plan rolling into action in the first place. This little word now, nevertheless, thrown down like a drawbridge between fear and ultimate surrender. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And he went through the awful ritual three times. At last he got up and returned to his followers, prepared to await his adversaries, for the inner victory was won. It wasn't over. Ahead of him lay the indignity of being bundled from one petty ruler to another. The shameful denial of Peter which must have cut him to the heart. The spitefulness of the crowd. The brutish cruelty of the soldiers. And the awful drawn out dying. But the battle of the will the most crucial battle for each one of us in our humanity. That was over. Within all the limitations of being human, knowing what it feels like to be you and me, lonely, fearful, not sure with any mathematical certainty that his hunch about God's call would not prove an empty dream. This man Jesus went forward towards his destiny, trusting God, his Abba, to hold him firm. This was the response that God had been waiting for from the foundation of the world. The loving obedience of humanity, which had passed through the prism of the people of Israel, was now being lived out in this one man. He was proving faithful, and he alone. And all our hope was and is in him. Now there's an extraordinary poem by a contemporary poet called James Brabazon called The Face on the Turin Shroud. Do you remember that, that shroud claimed to be the one that wrapped Jesus' body when he was buried, which the um, cathedral in Turin believe they have, and on it is impressed a human likeness. The Face on the Turin Shroud. This was the look of him, this down-to-earth man. This convinces me. None of the flimsy faces the painters put on him. This man never arrived at resurrection without a hard-won fight, nor was half air before he achieved ascension. With him he took a look of the earth he lay in, rock and a little soil and old olive roots. A sturdy, serene man, common sense in a riddle. He looks like his talk, before it was paired by Parsons, spun into sermons and so on, transtabulated into theology. This man was marvellous. Death instinct with life. Life at peace. This is man. They say he will judge me. I'm convinced. I am judged already. I stand before him knowing that, like each man, I am my own disaster. I know he knows. He will be merciful. 
this man looks like all that I ask of God. I can call him both me and Master. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who hath made heaven and earth. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Before the ending of the day, Creator of the world, we pray that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night. Tread underfoot our deadly foe, that we no sinful thought may know. O Father, that we ask be done, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. Amen. Psalm 134 Come, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, you that by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands towards the sanctuary and bless the Lord. The Lord who made heaven and earth give you blessing out of Zion. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The servants of the Lamb shall see the face of God, whose name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for God will be their light, and they will reign for ever and ever. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace, your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, 
a light to reveal you to the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of our fathers, to be praised and glorified above all for ever. Let us bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us praise him and magnify him for ever. Blessed are you, O Lord, in the firmament of heaven, to be praised and glorified above all for ever. Will you not turn again and quicken us, that your people may rejoice in you? O Lord, show your mercy upon us, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, we pray you to keep us this night without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto you. Let us pray. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace. And may your blessing be always upon us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who wake or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick. Give rest to the weary, sustain the dying, calm the suffering, and pity the distressed, all for your love's sake, O Christ our Redeemer. Amen. Look down, O Lord, from your heavenly throne. Illuminate the darkness of this night with your celestial brightness, and from the children of light banish the deeds of darkness through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us his peace. Amen.